Hello, everyone. Welcome to Options Brew TV Market Shot with Mark Phillips of Harvested Financial. Hello, Mark. Welcome. Lex, thanks. Good to see you as always. Thank you. You too. I get so excited about our Thursday shows. It's such a, such a pleasure. You always have something crazy interesting. So um, I, I already know you have something crazy interesting again. So this is going to be fun. I'm going to oh, turn I'm it over to you. Man. Too, and uh, I like I like spending my Thursday mornings noodling over uh, <laughs> you know, what are we going to come out with today. And uh, I got to keep you on your toes as well as the rest of you. <laughs> That's right. I'm sure I, I want you to stump me. You usually do, but I, I, I fake it. So <laughs> fantastic. All right. Fire away, Mark. What do you got? Yeah. So this one actually isn't necessarily a stumper. It's not necessarily something exotic. In some ways, what I want to do here is like open up a little of the Pandora's box behind probably some words that people hear thrown around, you know, relative to the option space, but mm -hmm. I want to break open exactly how these things are done. And these things are structured products. Okay. And so structured products are, you know, relatively common uh, for at big banks will often give them to some of their high net worth clients. You know, they're, they're these wrapped up simple products that say, you know, uh, they allow you to protect and participate. And so, okay. you know, they take a benchmark index, you know, it can be a single stock, it can be, you know, an index, it can be a basket of stocks, and they'll give you a defined participation range. So you get protection on the downside, but then you get participation on the upside. And, you know, it's a really nice way for people to stay exposed to a stock, but, you know, really know exactly where their sort of limits are. Okay. Um, so how does how do those folks who are interested in a structured product is it, is that an institutional investor can a normal retail type investor ha have access to to those sort of things? No, so that's okay. I think you hit the nail on the head there. That typically it tends to be those institutional investors, ultra high net worth clients will get access mm -hmm. to these. But we're seeing this product increasingly come quote unquote down market. Um, you know there are a lot of ETFs out there right. that offer a similar type return. Mm -hmm. um, but what I want to do here is kind of show how you can actually just do that yourself with options in any given name at oh, exactly the kind of level that you want. And, Perfect. You know, these are pretty popular products here at Harvested that we put on for clients because it lets you set up sort of your buffer zone, your participation zone, and you can tailor it to exactly where you want. Um, so Good. Okay. Understood. I got it. Great. We've got Apple up here. Um, but like I said, you can really do this in any type of uh, name. And you know sure. the fundamental structure looks relatively similar across across different names. Okay. So uh, the first one that I'm going to go out with, um, I'm going to go out to September. So it's about a half year. So think about what you're thinking about in Apple over the next six months. Got it. Um, and Apple's trading right now. Oh, it's actually perfectly at our center strike here. It's right around 122 half. All right. That's, that's where Apple is right there, right? Right there. It's perfect. Of course, I have the wrong box, but I'll do it again <laughs> right there. And then Mark's talking about this at the money strike, which is about equal to where the stock is almost pennies. Cool. Pennies away. It's perfect. We timed right. this, we timed this segment perfectly. Yes. <laughs> um, so I think the first leg that you want to build on here is, you know, counterintuitively a short put spread is going to be what provides your downside protection. Okay. And so that's a little counterintuitive. Okay. You're selling the put spread, but remember this is a fundamentally a bullish structure. Mm -hmm. So you sell the put spread, you, we're, let's sell the 122 put, and maybe, you know, let's give ourselves 10% protection. Um, so let's buy the 110. Okay. So now we've sold this put spread. On the downside, it's going to look like we own the stock. Apple goes down to 115, it would be as if we owned 100 shares of Apple. Our p and is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. That changes below 110, though. We're long that 110 put. Right. And so any price below 110, you know, it's as if we sold, say, the our stock at 110. So we're totally protected 90 at 90% of our original value. Mm -hmm. We got that 10% buffer on the downside. Got it. And we've been paid for this privilege. We've been paid $5.70 right now. It's about the midpoint of this. So we're going to collect about $5.70 to sell that put spread. Okay. And and have that exposure that looks similar to as if we owned Apple stock. Right. And that's a credit spread. So it, it Mark has this set up. So you can see it there. And he was talking about five dollars. Let's call it five dollars and seventy cents. Um, so that's what Mark is referring to when he when he's constructing this credit spread. That's what he's going, that's what he's collecting in in a, in a credit for the spread, right? A hundred percent. Okay. Um, you know, just as a credit spread, this looks like, you know, collect $5 and 70 max loss of $12 and or max value of $12 and 50 cents mm -hmm. max loss, you know, uh, somewhere like, you know, uh, 680. Right. 
Perfect. Okay. Got it. So now we want to take this $5 and 70 cents uh, that we've collected and use that to participate on the upside. Okay. So let's buy the 122 half call. And if we want to go cash neutral here, it's not exactly cash neutral, but if we sell the 140, you know, this looks like a 35 cent debit to get into Okay. This Got it. Now, if you wanted to, you could go down a strike and collect something if you wanted to, right? Exactly. So that's an interesting point is that this is actually the symmetrical exposure. Okay. If this is a 1250, you know, uh, difference on either side. You yep. know, participate in the first 1250 down, you mm -hmm. participate in the first 1250 on the upside, mm -hmm. and you get paid a little bit for that. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. So um, if you want to give yourself, you know, that's like 14% exposure on the upside, yep. you pay about 30, 35 cents for that. Okay. What do you have a preference collecting versus collecting a little bit of money versus uh, paying a little bit of money? Is, is it important to know one or versus the other? You know, I think I actually, you know, from a personal standpoint, like these types of products make sense if you're moderately bullish on something mm -hmm. and have some, some fear about the downside. So you know, paying just a little bit to get into that trade to have that little bit, you know, you get four extra basis point or four extra percentage points on the upside, mm -hmm. um, you know, for that 30 cent debit here. And so if you are moderately bullish, you know, um, I, I, I do personally like paying a, a little bit more to have that kind of extended upside. Got it. And then just it would, another point for the for the viewers too. Um, this is a long delta spread. And if you look in the in the uh, spread ticket, or I just uh, box out. It's 36 deltas per spread, meaning all this, all four legs, it's only a one lot right now. So you can see if it were 10 lot, it'd be 360 deltas, you know, 100 lot, 3,600 deltas, et cetera. And that's a long delta spread. So it would benefit from an upside move, right? Distinctly so. Yep. Okay. Great. This is, this is really cool. So what, now are you calling this, is this a structured product? Is there a funny name for these four legs like this? You know, I don't, this isn't, you know, a structured product is a very big catch all for all kinds of different defined outcome type scenarios. And, you know, you could have different underlyings and this is just a relatively simple, you know, the uh, components that like would, would build that up. So I, you know, I, I got to talk to my branding people or put on my branding hat <laughs> and come up with the right name for this because I, I don't have a great name for exactly what this is. How about this? You ready for this? Oh, I love it. I, I can't wait. A synthetic collar. Okay. Why? Because yeah. What you've constructed in this version is you constructed synthetic long stock and you've got the long put short call, That's a, which is, in fact, of a collar against your synthetic. So we could call it a synthetic collar. I actually really like that because <laughs> collars are a great tool, you know, for overall protecting an equity position that you might not have. Yeah. Whereas this, like you say, that combo that you have on the 122 line gives you that synthetic long stock. Yeah, right, right, right. And I'm guessing though, if you wanted to be crazy, you could you could actually move this short put here for whatever reason, and it wouldn't be exactly a synthetic necessarily. And then you start getting to some other dynamics. But let's keep it like this. Let's not go crazy. Um, this is great. I really like it. Are we able to see a graph on this? Uh, yeah. Let's what if? What? So this is interesting, right? It, remember, it looks like long stock at these levels. He's going to make it a bigger a bigger range. There you go. So the, I'm going to let you explain this, but I just want to make a note. What we were seeing just before he expanded the range was this this long section here. Okay, uh -huh. but when you look at the this whole combination of this the structured product, you get a really good look of of the defined exposure. Go ahead, Mark. You take it from here, but this is really a cool graph. No, you're going exactly the way I was hoping to. That like you know this this long leg here. This looks just like equity. Stock goes up a dollar. You participate as if you were long Apple stock. Stock mm -hmm. goes down a dollar. You participate as if you were uh, long Apple stock. You know, but you're capped. You're capped with that collar that says you know what. I'm willing to exchange my protection below a 10% drop in exchange for any gains above a 15% rise or right. change percent rise here. Yep. Very um, cool. And that's a trade-off that a lot of people are interested in making. You know, the, the downside is painful, but being willing to accept that first 15% and nothing more, that that's a nice trade-off. And you know, there's a biannual. So this is only for the next six months. So it would be a 15% gain in the next six months. We're, we're right. only looking at September here. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so as, 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 as the date of expiration, I think it was 189 days. Is that nears? Are we thought if you're still a believer in the upside here, do we roll this out? Is that a possibility or we just take it off and start? Oh, what's any thoughts there? 
yeah, I think it's definitely a good opportunity to keep rolling, reset at a new level, you know, reset at the money. And because these are relatively cheap spreads to put on, um, potentially even for a credit, like in that scenario that we saw, you know, that is something that you can kind of continue to, to roll forward. And, awesome. Um, yeah, very ratchet good. Ratchet up or ratchet down, right. um, as, you know, depending on the direction. Cool. You know, you said you didn't want to get too fancy. I did want to show a slight variation. Though. Go ahead. Of course, do it. I, there, there is a little bit of a variation because. Okay. You can think about it too. Keep your 10% downside. Mm -hmm. If you think stock's going to go up only a little bit, let's take off the 140s and put on the 130s. But let's get 2x for this first seven and a half dollars. Oh, so you're doing okay. So, so now I have sure. two of the yeah. upside call spreads versus one of the short put spreads. Still almost cash neutral. You know, it's uh, maybe a 45 cent difference. Yep. Yep, I love it. And then interestingly, the deltas are about the same as before. If the if you remember from before, it's 36 it's deltas per, and now it's 35. I'm going to call that the same, right? Um, but what, what Mark did is he made a ratio two here, two here. I'm looking at this to make sure I'm right. And then versus one by one. And you can see that in Mark's spread builder here, the ratios. So he's in a two by one ratio of that call spread to the put spread, okay, right? Exactly, so, okay. you know, we still have that 10%, you know, uh, downside uh, region, you know, between 122 and 110, you're, it's a, as if you were long stock, but on the upside between 122 and 130, it's as if you were long twice as much stock. Right. So this might be a scenario where you think there's a moderate chance of it going up and you wanna, you know, double your impact over that sort of near region, um, you're obviously giving up, you know, more of the upside, but in the near term, you're getting twice as much bang for your buck. Right. Right. Well, how's this graph? This is, can we do this graph real quick before? Uh, yeah. Let's do this one too. So you're going to see a little bit of a steeper yeah. curve. There it is. That little crink in the curve. I love it. Exactly. This is a, yep. this zoom in right here is a perfect, you can yep. see that this is as if you were long a hundred shares and it's going down and then it starts going up faster. Um, uh, as you participate you yep. know, a little bit more. So Got you, it. you more quickly get to that max value at 130, between yep. 122 and 130, you jump up where you have this more gradual decline all the way down to 110. Right, love it. Very cool. And, and, and you know, look at viewers that you can, you can make this crazy. You can go three by one. You can go, you know, it's the sky's the limit on based on your, your, your opinions and, and your assumptions about, you know, what you think Apple in this case uh, may do. So there's, there's all kinds of variations of this on top of it. So this is very good. I love it. Exactly. And it sort of all starts with where you want to sell that put spread. Um, mm -hmm. That's sort of the way I like to go about the process of, you know, you can go with the at the money, you can go with a little bit further out of the money. Um, you know, you're going to collect less money, the further out of the uh, money it is. Uh, but you know, there's all kinds of variations you can do and, uh, ratios, strikes, you know, the sure. Very synthetic cool. collar has a lot of different, uh, variables to play. The synthetic collar. I, I like, okay, we're going to, you like that? Do, are we going with I that? Do. All right. And then if it's ratio, we're going to have the synthetic ratioed collar or something. I don't Ooh. know. Holy cow. Oh, so I much love it. I love it. Well, Mark, this is awesome. I love this. Um, this is a really good one. I think this is, um, fairly unusual, right? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, just a simple combination of some spreads, but it shows, you know, sort of how powerful where you move things um, and where, where you want to set them yep. at, you know, that can really tailor a very interesting customized sort of exposure to right. any equity under the sun, right? This doesn't just work with Apple. It doesn't just work with Spy. Mm -hmm. You can pick any name out there. Um, Perfect. This on. I love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess around with these. So um, great, great stuff, Mark. Thanks again for our Thursday market shot. Uh